Ian, so great to uh, to see you. I'm going to say again, we go <laughs> way back, way back to backbeat. Okay. Oh so, wow, that is yeah, way back. And I have to tell you before we start on this, one of the promo items that we got was this T-shirt, and I'm telling you, I still have it. It was my favorite T-shirt. It's red, <laughs> but I love it. So thank you for that. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, listen, it's so great to have you back. And the shepherd is just, it's just beautiful, you know, short, but packs a punch, I got to tell you. And you are in very good company uh, working on this short film. First of all, um, you know, having Alfonso Cuaron and John Travolta involved. I mean, come on, amazing. But what was it about Frederick Forsythe's novella that kind of, you know, touched your heart and you thought, I want to bring this to the screen? Well, <clears throat> when I read it, um, I was immediately gripped by it. I think it's it just draws you in and you're completely um, taken with what's going through this young pilot's mind as he travels on Christmas Eve under a moonlit uh, night, um, snow covered uh, northern Europe in the 50s. And, you, and it's, it's his dream, really. He's, he's, he's fought for this chance to fly home. And then tragedy hits and yeah. I was just gripped by it and it moves through different in such a short time. It moves through almost different genres of film. It, it's, yes. it's, a, it's a kind of survival story at one point, then it becomes something much more mysterious. Um, he's, he's, uh, he's got his heart set on flying home to Christmas to see his girlfriend and his family and things change from being a dream to a nightmare almost almost on a sixpence. Um, Absolutely. And I thought it was very evocative. I thought that it had um, themes of, you know, the Good Samaritan, and it's obviously its uh, origins are in the story of Christmas. Um, but it uh, it's a story that pervades all over the world and for centuries in, in other religions as well. The idea of of guiding home, uh, helping a, a stranger who's lost, um, uh, I, th I think is incredibly resonant, and it's it feels like a, a story for everybody. Um, uh, and I was, uh, I was really struck by how, what a gem it was of storytelling, how precise and how effective. And he, he just didn't put a foot, a foot wrong. Um, yeah. And so it was really a, a gift for me. Yeah, it's quite beautiful. And um, is it true that um, John Travolta has kind of been playing with this for, you know, I don't know, 30 odd years that he wanted to play the pilot in the, uh, originally? What, what, tell me Absolutely. that Absolutely, yeah. He wanted yeah. to play the pilot when he was uh, obviously of the, the age of the young pilot. Yeah. Um, but, but he, you know, he never forgot the story. Um, I think in, um, you know, uh, that there are countries in the world where it's, a radio production has been uh, played every Christmas. Uh, it's never been out of print since yeah. it was written in the 60s. And John actually owned a vampire jet, the kind of the co the co hero of the film. Yeah. And so I, I met him when originally he was just thinking of being an executive producer because it was his agent that put us in touch with the project uh, and alerted us to it and said, you know, well, John would love to be involved. And then as we talked more, um, I uh, I think I convinced him or and, and Bill Kenwright, the other producer, uh, as, uh, alongside Alfonso, who who um, was incredibly influential. Yeah. Um, uh, we convinced John and um, he was had very precise requirements because he's such an aviation expert himself. Exactly. Yeah. Wanted to be convinced that we had got everything right. And I'm pleased to say that, you know, we passed all the tests uh, and, and he's, he's really, really happy with the film at the moment. And He uh, should be. He should be. Uh, yeah, there's no question about it. I will he's, think about... He's really... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. And he's great in the film. Um, beyond i think you know i knew that he's you know i've been a fan of his in so many films yeah. but there was something it's almost like he felt so at home in the role he really feels that that character that story has been with him for so many years i think you see that in in the performance oh 100 percent. yeah I, I i love i you know why for anybody who doesn't know the story and hasn't seen it yet i don't want to give it give away but yeah it works perfectly um ben radcliffe is is wonderful you know, and I want to know for you the challenges of shooting this young man when there's so many close ups on his face, you know, in the cockpit and everything. Is that a lot, you know, he's using his imagination clearly and all this kind of stuff. Is that a, a bit more of a challenge for you as a director as opposed to, you know, producing big or directing big giant, you know, scenes? Absolutely. I mean, the pressure on Ben and the pressure on me in choosing the right, the right actor. I think we saw 150 
Um, I was very aware that I wanted a combination of somebody who at the beginning of the film seems to be a matinee idol, seems to be a bit of a hero or a wannabe hero. And then his inexperience, inexperience comes through when he, uh, everything goes wrong, he loses all his instruments. Um, and I needed somebody who could play that gamut. But also when I adapted the novella, um, I decided that I wasn't going to use the voiceover, which is the technique. It's all yes. narration. It's all, it's all narrated by Freddie in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of, uh, the book is perfect for radio play in that sense. And I and wanted to make it much more cinematic, much more filmic. And by taking away um, the, the narration, it all had to be expressed through his performance, you know, the expressions on his face, the mental uh, turmoil and the journey he was going on. Um, so it's all, it really, it's all down to his performance, but I wanted to augment that with the sense of using sound and using image um, to create that sense of increasing claustrophobia um, and, uh, and, and really, you know, because a lot of the film takes place, um, certainly the, the, the middle, up to the middle of the film takes place just in the cockpit and then it goes exactly. to a whole other dimension in the end. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. And did you shoot, from what I understand, you also shot on the location of the original airfield? Is that correct? Yes, the, the story of how we made the film, and that was a huge challenge that you know, we, we deliberated about for a long time because there's only one vampire jet flying yeah. um, in the Northern Hemisphere, um, and that's in Norway. So we negotiated to bring that plane over with their crew, and we did a lot of the, sh of the, of the aerials and some of the runway scenes with this uh, aircraft, but it couldn't land on the airfield that we'd chosen. And I chose an airfield in the, it, it, almost as if it's, you know, I'm come straight out of the book. Yeah. It was perfectly preserved. And it also had to be a film studio as well. So we, we lucked out there uh, in a very remote part of, uh, of the East of England. Yeah. Um, because we couldn't land the, the plane that we used for all the flying, some of the flying sequences, uh, we needed to find another plane. Um, and our art department did the most amazing job because there wasn't a whole intact plane anywhere. Right. Um, and they put it together from bits of rusty wings that they found in a barn here or a shed there. Or, and, and they trawled all, all over the country um, and they found these bits. And uh, so we did a combination of shooting on the, uh, on, on the authentic airfield uh, with a replica plane and with the real flying plane from Norway, all during COVID. Wow. So it was... It was a, everybody was wearing masks and, and daily tests. Uh, so that was a, a challenge, but I think it brought us all closer together. I'm sure. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time. It's such a pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to you again, and best of luck. And I think we all need a guardian angel and it really, uh, this really makes you feel so good after you watch it. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Have a great thank you, weekend. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.